Hello there guys and welcome back to another episode of How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft. Today we're going to be taking a quick look at a topic that many of you have been asking me to cover, and no, it isn't applied energistics. Today we're going to be looking at the energy bridge from the power converters mod. The energy bridge is relatively simple and quite inexpensive to build, and allows us to convert one type of Minecraft power into another form of Minecraft power. The energy bridge can handle four different types of power, build craft, industrial craft, steam power from rail craft, and also factorization. Unfortunately, the energy bridge can't handle red craft power. Although you can use a blue electric engine to convert red craft power into build craft power and feed that into the energy bridge. Now, as I said, it's relatively inexpensive, but you are going to need at least one diamond and 12 gold bars. But let's head on over to the workshop and I can show you guys how to assemble and use the energy bridge. Okay then guys, now, as I said, this is actually surprisingly simple. To convert power from one form to another, you actually need three components. You need the energy bridge itself, where the magic happens. You need an energy consumer, which takes the type of power you have and feeds it into the energy bridge. And you also need an energy producer, which takes power from the bridge and outputs it into the correct type. So the first thing we're going to do is we are going to build our energy bridge. Now this is where the diamond comes in. You're going to need a diamond in the center, a glass block either side, a redstone top and bottom, and a bar of gold in each corner, and that will give you an energy bridge. Now I'm gonna make two of these for demonstration purposes. If you place an energy bridge down on the ground and you want to move it, all you need is a pick. It's easily movable with a pick. So there is our energy bridge. Now, like I said, you have producers and consumers. Both are built in exactly the same way and you can easily swap one between the other. So first of all, let's have a look at building a build craft consumer. Now to build a build craft consumer, you are going to need either a steam engine or a sterling engine. So the result's the same, but you have two ways of building it. So steam engine in the middle of a crafting table and four gold ingots in the corners, and that will give you a BC consumer, a build craft consumer. We can do exactly the same thing with the sterling engine, just so you guys can see. Four gold ingots in the corner gives us another build craft consumer. Now, as I mentioned before, consumers take the power you already have and feed it into the energy bridge. If I want to convert this build craft consumer into a producer, all I need to do is plop it somewhere in the crafting table and the result is a producer, which I can now take. So I now have a build craft consumer and a producer. If I put the producer back into the table, I can convert it back into a consumer again. So let's have a look at the other types. If we have a commercial steam engine in the center and put four gold ingots in the corners, we get a steam consumer, which will allow us to take steam from a low pressure or high pressure boiler. Now also, with a solar turbine in the center, you can actually make a factorization consumer. Unfortunately, you can no longer build the solar turbine in the current version of factorization, which is included in the current version of Feed the Beast Ultimate 1.4.7. So if you want to build a factorization consumer in this version of Feed the Beast, you're going to need to spawn in the solar turbine. Now, a lot of you are probably also using industrial craft power, and you will either want to convert your IC power into something else, or convert something else into IC power. But the same principles apply of low voltage, medium voltage, high voltage, and extreme voltage. Now, what you need to make each one of those is either a low, medium, or high voltage transformer, or for extreme voltage, an MFSU. So for example, low voltage transformer in the middle with gold ingots in the corner is going to give us an industrial craft two low voltage consumer. So obviously if you put anything above 32 EU per tick into it, it will explode. A medium voltage transformer with gold ingots around it will give us the MV consumer. Obviously you get exactly the same thing with the high voltage transformer, we get a high voltage consumer. And with the MFSU in the middle, we also get our extreme voltage consumer. So now we've built all the blocks and what I'm going to do is pop up onto the roof and show you guys quite easily how they work. 
Okay, so I've set up a couple of experiments on the roof so I can give you guys some examples. Unfortunately, I don't have anything that uses factorization or steam power at the moment, so I can't demonstrate either of those. But I can demonstrate converting industrial craft into build craft and vice versa. But converting between steam and factorization works in exactly the same way. So what you can see I have here, I have my MFSU, which is almost fully charged. Obviously that's outputting 512 EU per tick, which is high voltage. And over here I have a thermionic fabricator, which requires build craft energy. So I need to convert high voltage industrial craft into build craft. So the first thing I want to do is put down one of my energy bridges, which I'm going to put right there in the middle. Let's take the other one out of my hotbar. Now if I right click on the energy bridge, you'll see the interface, and you can see here there are six connections, up, down, north, south, west and east, and they just correspond to the directions that it is facing. You can put any number of different consumers and producers on one energy link, so you can have up to six because you can put one onto each face. So you could do something simple, one input or one output, or you could have one input with many outputs, you could have uh, many inputs with one output or, or any mixture as long as you have up to six. So what I'm going to need is a Industrial Craft 2 high voltage consumer and I'm going to put that down next to it. And the reason I need that is because I'm going from a high voltage output. I could go from my medium volt transformer if I wanted to and go with a medium volt consumer, but I'm going to go straight from the MFSU, so I need high voltage. If I now right click on the input for the energy bridge, you can see that the south connection, which if we look on the mini map is correct because I'm now facing south, the south connection is an Industrial Craft 2 high voltage input, so it's a consumer. No link because it doesn't have anything connected to it at the moment. If I were to take some glass fibre cables and connect those up, and now I right click, you can see we now have an input coming in to the bridge. No power going through it at the moment of course, because there's nothing connected, there's nothing, nowhere for the power to go. So what I want to do now is output uh, buildcraft power. So what I'm going to need to do is get a buildcraft producer. All I have here is a consumer. Luckily, I popped a crafting table up here earlier, so I'm going to take the Buildcraft Consumer, pop it in the crafting table and get a Buildcraft Producer, and I'm going to pop that down on the north side. Now, if I right click on the interface for the energy bridge, you can now see on the north side we have a Buildcraft output with no link. So I'm going to pop the energy conduits down, give it a quick bash with a crescent hammer so that the power is going in the right direction. And now if we just clear some of the junk off my bar, right click on the energy bridge and you can see that we are inputting in pulses between 5 and 15 energy units per tick and we are outputting a relatively constant 6 to 7 MJ per tick. If we look at our thermionic fabricator, you can see that it is gaining power and the energy is rising. So we are taking power from our MFSU, so the power is still going up because we have enough solar panels on here to keep it charging, and we have power going in and being converted. So let's look at doing this a different way. I'm going to use our pick, we're going to pick up all of these blocks, and now we're going to try doing it in the opposite direction. I have a similar experiment over here where I have a peat fired engine, which obviously is gonna produce build craft power. And I have an electric furnace over here inside with some iron ore, and that requires industrial craft power. So exactly the same thing as we did before. We are going to need an energy bridge, which I'm gonna pop there roughly in the center. If we right click on it, you can see nothing is connected. Now I'm going to need to have a Buildcraft Consumer. Had one of those somewhere and now I've lost it. There we go, Buildcraft Consumer. So I'm gonna pop that down there, which is the east side. So if I right click on the interface, you can see on the east side, we have a Buildcraft Consumer, an input with no link. What I'm going to do is put down a couple of redstone energy conduits to connect that up. Give it a whack with the crescent hammer, get it going in the right direction, flick the switch, 
and if we look at the energy bridge you can see we are starting to generate power now the energy bridge also has its own internal battery and as you can see it is starting to receive power from the engine so the engine hasn't quite warmed up yet so the power is not consistent but it is charging up the energy bridge now our electric furnace is a low voltage item so what I'm going to need is a low voltage producer we've got a low voltage consumer over to the crafting table pop the consumer in and it becomes a producer we'll pop that down and clear our hot bar and as you can see now on the west side we have an industrial craft 2 low voltage output and there is no link because it's not connected to anything so anything that is red means that it has no connection. Anything that is yellow means that it has a connection but there's no power traveling through it. And anything that is green is transporting power. So now we're going to get some glass fiber cables, connect those up and you can instantly see the furnace comes on and we are now smelting the iron ore. If we go and have a look at the energy bridge, you can now see that we are inputting buildcraft power and we are outputting low voltage industrial craft power. Now I'll show you just for examples as well, if we were to take our um, extreme voltage consumer and we've also got a buildcraft producer, we can put those on different sides. Let's pop them all down because we can. Let's get that producer just so we've got a different type. Shift and click to place it down. Now if you right click, you can actually right click on any of the blocks to get the interface, it doesn't actually have to be the energy bridge itself. As you can see now we have something connected to every face with the exception of the underside because it's, it's placed down on the roof. And as you can see we have a couple of outputs and three inputs. So I could, filled, I could um, feed build craft power in, I could feed industrial craft power in in medium and extreme voltage and I can output build craft power and I could output industrial craft power at low voltage. If we just take that one off the top there and we've got our steam consumer for example, let's pop that on the top. Oh, shift and click and you can now see that on the top we have a steam input so you can swap that for an output and make it a steam output so you've got a very simple and inexpensive way of converting one type of power to another which takes up a maximum of three blocks if you just want to convert power type A into power type B and there you go you have the energy bridge well guys, hopefully that's cleared up any mysteries you may have had about the energy bridge. It's quite simple and relatively inexpensive to build and is a very easy and effective way of converting one type of Minecraft power into another. Of course, I hope as always you found this video informative and entertaining. If you have, please like, share and subscribe because it's you guys that help this channel grow. And remember, you can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook and the links are in the description below the video. As always, if you have any ideas for future videos, if there is a particular machine item or mod that you'd like to cover in a future episode, either send me a message or leave it in the comments below and I will add it to the list and get to it eventually. So until next time, I've been Unstable Voltage. This has been How to Feed the Beast in Minecraft and I'll see you next time. Goodbye for now.